name is Ryan Chinowit. I am a data science consultant at Northwest Cadence. Uh, today I would like to talk about, about Microsoft R Server. Um, R Server is an enterprise class server for hosting and managing R workloads. It provides an execution engine for solutions built using Microsoft R packages for high performance analytics and statistical analysis, um, as well as machine learning scenarios. Oftentimes the final step in machine learning uh, models is to deploy it um, deploy it with an interface so it can be consumed in applications or in workflows, um, and Microsoft R Server provides that interface. Um, it is a, a full-featured uh, web services software development kit for R that allows programmers consu to consume predictive analytics using any language. Um, Microsoft R Server allows you to um, simply deploy your code as a web service and consume it. Uh, the nice thing about Microsoft R Server is that it uses the Swagger API framework, and that's why it can be consumed using any language. Um, I am not an expert at Swagger API, um, so what I did to incorporate it into a small app console application that um, I'm going to demo soon is I used Microsoft's AutoRest tool, um, and this generates all client libraries that you need to access that web service. Um, super easy to use and download, um, would recommend it if you're not familiar with Swagger. Um, to uh, kind of demo Microsoft R Server, I um, kind of will be going through one of the blogs I wrote you know, on May 15th about deploying your first web service. Um, and we will be using a public data set pr provided by Kaora, where um, we just want to detect if two questions are the same. Um, and if you would like to download this data set and walk through it with me, um, it's on this blog here and you can download it, I believe it's at the bottom um, right here. So um, feel free to download that and mess around. Um, now let's kind of get started with the R server, uh, the fun part. So uh, here we have my script. This is kind of the first thing I did was I just imported my data um, and I have some stuff commented out for my split and then kind of deploying it here and training it. And it, it can be really messy and long. And this was what you often see with machine learning script is it's difficult to read because it's kind of all over the place. Um, so I have actually split my code out into several files. Um, the first one being uh, a config file. Uh, this contains usernames and passwords to and connection string to log on to my server, um, as well as a connection string to blob storage um, where I'm keeping my pre-split data. Um, it actually takes a little bit to split that data set um, and to test and train, so I have done it in the past so that um, I can just run commands. Um, so, uh, yeah. Oh, I forgot to, I did not load my config file, so it looks like it's not gonna run, but uh, that's fine, because we can go to my train model, where it'll actually um, load the config file, uh, load the required Microsoft ML package. This is a very um, powerful R package that allows for machine learning. It's supported by Microsoft ML. It's, it's meant for big data. Um, they provide um, a lot of really cool features out of the box. Um, some of its sen sentiment analysis or and even image recognition. Um, and we are going to be using the featureized text function here to create n-grams um, of the questions. So um, we're going to break those into you know, subsets so we can say um, we have something to predict on. Um, and here we are going to use the Rx fast trees um, to predict whether or not the questions are duplicate. Um, and we simply get rid of any variables we don't use. Um, and then after we train our model, um, in this case I'm not going to run it here, it takes a little bit, um, we are then going to use our model to predict um, on our, our yeah, test data set. Um, and after that, if we're satisfied with the results, we can save that model to file, um, which will be later published using our deploy script, um, which is kind of next in line. Um, but I did want to mention um, we have an init script here. Um, if you actually notice, mine is empty. Uh, this is because um, at Northwest Cadence, we use Visual Studio Team Services um, to deploy, um, automate our deployment of machine learning models. We use a, a, a build server um, that has an R server installed on it so that we can uh, train our model in the build and then uh, we release that model um, 
to that R server um, with our deploy script. So builds are kind of training that data, training our model, and releases are deploying our model. Um, but in this case, we don't have any um, extra packages to install. Um, so we then have our function. Um, when you deploy a, a web service, uh, it gets deployed as an R function. So in this case, um, this function takes two uh, questions, uh, formats them as a data frame. It's just one row. Um, and uh, then it predicts um, on that data frame and then returns a result um, to us. Uh, so if we go to actually our um, my messy script, um, that was kind of for development, um, I can run this command where I, I can go get our API um, and then I'm actually going to load our config file so I can use my connection strings. Um, so we can go in here, API, and we, there's a get service function that allows you to get a web service. Uh, and we can use our service name variable and our service version um, to go get an API. And then we can actually test that API in um, our R IDE. Uh, in this case, I use the R tools for Visual Studio. Um, because it's in this, it'll be a little bit slower. Um, but then we can use um, the result variable that we assign that response to to see whether or not it was successful and uh, what that output was. Um, you'll also notice down here that we have um, that we generate a Swagger file. Uh, this is a swagger.json file you see here um, where we then use the auto rest um, tool to create those generated files that we need um, so pretty simple uh, to get that file um, and then it looks like we have consumed that uh, web service and we can run both these commands to print out the response so we see um, the call was successful that's what true means and um, it responded with a 0.377 um, probability that these two questions are the same, which we can see that they're obviously not the same. So our model did a pretty good job at predicting that. Um, so now we've kind of tested it. Um, we can, now we want to deploy it. Um, so here I have a deploy script um, where we load our function and our config. Remember our function is this, it's just the code that the web service executes. And then we load a library called MRS deploy. This is Microsoft R server deploy, um, which allows us to use a remote login where we can log into our server from our desktop. Um, and then it allows us to um, get our service and see is our API there. Um, if it is not there, then we want to publish a new service it does it by service name and service version. So um, we will want to publish a new service or we can update a service. Um, updating a service is often used if you're just retraining uh, your web service. Um, you'll want to do so um, on a regular cadence, um, whether that's once a day, once a week, once a month, once a year, um, or one time forever. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that, but on a regular basis, so you want to update the service so with new data so that your model continues to get smarter. Um, then I did mention that it's very easy for software developers to incorporate these web services into an application. Um, so I have a very, very simple um, client application where it's just a, a console app. And it's all command line, uh, but you see here's a lot of the authentication files um, that were generated by that auto rest um, and then I simply wrote a one program file where it, it's not pretty but it just kind of loops through and says give me a question give me another question and then it calls the API um, and then it kind of prints out all oh, the questions are the same or are they not the same and if you open up your console um, you see I asked um, is this a good demo or, and is this a bad demo and that's the two questions and it came back with a point zero four but they're and so therefore they're not the same um, the model here probably saw good and bad and said oh can't be the same um, but we might say that these are the same questions and so we would want to flag these and then this would be new data we put back into our model to say hey these two are actually the same so our 
in the future, our model might be able to predict that. Here, we, um, I ask you know, two more questions. Um, how do I learn physics? What's the best way to learn physics? Kind of the same questions. Um, I would probably classify them as logically the same, um, even though one's asking how do I learn and how do, what's the best way. A um, little different, but it does come back with a 0.56 uh, probability. And so we do say that they are the same question. Um, and then, and that's how easy it is to incorporate um, an R service, R server web service in your uh, code. Um, if you have any questions, please contact us at clientservices at nwkness.com. Thank you.